Brought to you by SWIP Radio, another free stormwater education resource from WGR Southwest. Okay, um, thank you very much for joining us today for a webinar on the impaired water bodies and the industrial general stormwater permit, and we call that IGP. And this quick webinar is to just talk about the difference between new dischargers and the requirements for impaired water bodies and the difference between the requirements for existing dischargers. My name is Laurel Wardrip and I'm the Industrial and Construction Stormwater Unit Chief here at the State Water Board. So really simple, um, there's a large difference between a new discharger, which is the first part of this presentation, and we'll be talking about existing dischargers next. So getting comfortable with this new term. What is a new discharger? And the reason this is really important is because not every person applying for a permit after July 1st of 2015 are necessarily a new discharger. We have defined this in attachment C of the glossary in the new IGP. This is also from the Federal Code of, Code of Federal Regulations in 122.2. So when you go in and are going to be electronically starting a new notice of intent, there's some things to keep in mind with whether or not you're a new discharger. And the reason you really want to know is because only new dischargers have impaired water body requirements that are for what we'll talk about in the next couple slides. So a new discharger is if you had a discharge that commenced after August 13th of 1979, or you haven't been defined as a new source, by the EPA, and you've never had an NPDES permit for stormwater discharges at the site. And number three is very important because for an example is if you were an auto dismantler in the old permit, the 9703DWQ, you sell your business to a new auto dismantler after July 1st, you wouldn't be a new discharger because there has been stormwater NPDES permit coverage for that site that location, as well as for those types of stormwater discharges. So let's say you are a new discharger. Um, for example, you were an auto dismantler before July 1st of 2015. You sell your company, and now you're a food manufacturer, and you'd like to get a permit. So what do you need to do? Well, you're going to go into our stormwater multiple application report tracking system, and you're going to start a new notice of intent. And there are some questions in there related to impaired water bodies. And what this is related to, that the permit didn't necessarily give all the information upon adoption that we've clarified since then, is it really applies to direct discharges. And so new dischargers applying for notice of intent after July 1st that will be discharging to an impaired water body they're ineligible for coverage unless you get a qualified industrial stormwater practitioner demonstrating one of the few things on this slide. And this is section V2B, so seven, of the um, industrial permit. So let me back up one minute. Where you talk about a new discharger and where you're talking about applying for a notice of intent, we have found that that means a direct discharge to impaired water body or through an MS4 system that directly discharges to an impaired water body. If you notice, this, is, this means that indirect discharges to an impaired water body um, without the MS4 there, you're not a new discharger discharging to an impaired water body. So these would not apply to you. And we'll get into that in the next slide. So let's just say that you are directly discharging to an impaired water body, and you would need a qualified industrial stormwater practitioner that would demonstrate that you have eliminated all your industrial stormwater pollutants related to that impairment, or the pollutant for which the water body is impaired is not present at your site, and that's the industrial pollutants. That's not clear in the permit either. It is, it is not taking into account natural background and things that, the, for example, aerial deposition that the discharger would have to be responsible for. And the other thing would be, well, maybe I have the pollutant, but I discharge it that would 
to a level that would not cause or contribute to an exceedance of a water quality standard. So you can't get a new notice of intent unless you get this qualified industrial stormwater practitioner out to your site to prove one, one two, or three for that industrial pollutant directly discharging to an impaired water body. So as you noticed in this slide, there's some notes here, and these are the caveats. So this does not apply to no exposure certifications. They're not new dischargers. And the reason that this is is if you have a no exposure certification, that means you don't have industrial pollutants exposed to stormwater precipitation. So you wouldn't be discharging these pollutants either way. And it's very important, the note I made is in three here, when we say discharging to a water body with an impairment, this is what we mean. This means discharging directly to the impaired water body or through an MS4 with a direct, direct discharge to that impaired water body. Very important to keep in mind that you can look at all the impaired water bodies that this permit covers in Appendix 3 of the 2014-0057 order, which we have posted on our website. And very important is when we talk about pollutants for new discharges impaired water bodies, we are talking about industrial pollutants, not non-industrial pollutants. And very important that you keep in mind the QISP requirement when you're getting your application. So you'd want to start in advance. If you think that you discharge directly to an impaired water body or through an MS4 that directly discharges to an impaired water body, you definitely want to get that QISP on your site before you apply because it'll delay your coverage. So separating out, if you noticed, with new dischargers, it's very, very much linked to where the discharger's water is going. It's directly going into an impaired creek, or the MS4 that it dis the facility discharges into directly goes to an impaired uh, creek or river or lake, any water of the U.S. This is very different for an existing discharger. And what an existing discharger is, is somebody who had a permit under the old permit, the 9703DWQ permit, has recertified under the new permit, and they have a notice of intent. So that's what we mean by an existing discharger. So we have a few things in the permit about what are the impaired water body requirements for an existing discharger and it's very different than new dischargers. We put in Appendix 3 of the permit about the watershed scale. And to develop a tool for dischargers to actually be able to do the watershed scale kind of analysis for their potential pollutant source assessment, we had to build a model. Um, otherwise, we wouldn't be able to provide a tool for dischargers to use. And so we surveyed the regional water boards, and they actually picked the Hydrologic Unit 10, co uh, hydrologic unit 10 uh, watershed scale. And what a HUC 10 is, is it's the size of a watershed. So it's one type of metric where you can look at where water drains in a certain um, area. There's other sizes for HUC 10s. If you go too large, so you get into the larger hydrologic units, you're looking at regional scales. Um, and if you go too small, you're, what we found is that you're actually splitting up water bodies. And so we picked the HUC 10 for this tool so that dischargers, it was kind of the middle size. So it wasn't too stringent and it also wasn't um, unprotective. So basically, when you look at the Appendix 3, where it says watershed, we mean HUC-10. And the reason that we had to define it is because we wanted to provide a tool, because we found that many individuals wouldn't be able to create a tool like this on their own to comply with the permit. And the tool is in SMARTS, and I'll show you that at the end of the presentation. So basically, if you've obtained a notice of intent, and you are trying to do your annual report or you're trying to do your pollutant source assessment and you're trying to link up how to be in compliance with the impaired water body requirements, you would be looking at this tool in SMARTS and looking at the pollutants in your HUC-10 watershed and if they're related to your industrial activities. 
also something that is similar to the new discharger requirement is that it's still industrial pollutants. It has nothing to do with your natural background, aerial deposition. This is industrial pollutants in your Hucktown watershed where the facility is located. So here's an example. So if I'm in an impair, a 303 delisted impaired watershed, and let's just say that in that listing of pollutants in that watershed, one of them is aluminum in that HUC-10. And my facility actually creates aluminum in my industrial process. Well, the discharger must sample for aluminum in addition to your other monitoring. The reason this is not... Um, it isn't much different than just doing a pollutant source assessment at your site. We really just want to make sure you're looking at these impaired pollutants for that watershed. So if you had aluminum without any of these impaired water body requirements, you should also be sampling for it just based upon the requirements in the industrial permit. So just for you guys to know, here's some um, permit citations that talk about the impaired water bodies that may help you uh, navigate where to find some of these requirements. But in essence, for existing dischargers, you're going to be using that watershed tool and SMARTS, and you're going to be selecting industrial-related pollutants at your site and adding them to your monitoring implementation program. And if you look at Appendix 3, you know, you want to dig into maybe some specific receiving waters or impaired water bodies. There are some, in the Excel spreadsheet, there are some rows that are red, and those are only required when a regional board um, a regional board requires you to monitor for those constituents. We found in general that those were things that weren't directly applicable to industrial discharges. So I wanted to show you this really quick. So what SMARTS does in the background is it takes these red lines. These are HUC-10s. These are the size of a HUC-10. And as you can see, these green lines in here, these are impaired water bodies. And so what SMARTS does is it takes the lat long of the facility, which is this blue dot here, and it puts you on a map. And once you put on that map, it runs a tool that highlights all the impaired water bodies in that hydraulic unit 10. And once it's selected that watershed and those impaired water bodies, it does a summary for you. And it tells you in that watershed, these are the potential uh, pollutants that you may have to consider when you do your pollutant source assessment. Now, you only have to consider the pollutants and the parameter if you have it as part of your industrial activity. So the way you can summarize this is these are the pollutants in the HUC-10 that your facility is located, and you'd be selecting ones that are related to your industrial activity. And that's what present at a facility means, is that it's present and it's related to your industrial activity. And then there's a summary up here at the top that talks about how SMARTS is programmed to pull all those impairments into that, that model. They, you'll see the same screen for uh, the discharges for the new dischargers for impaired water bodies, but you'd only be selecting the pollutant related to that direct discharge instead of the watershed scale. So that's all I have. I'm happy to take some questions. For clarification, when you uh, for new dischargers, they're only uh, looking for the impairments for the water, the receiving water that takes their water directly, not the whole watershed. Correct. Correct. Is and just caveating that with, if you discharge to an MS4 that directly discharges to an impaired water body, the discharger is still responsible for that impairment. Uh, on a related question, um, when you say it goes to an MS4 that directly discharges to a water body. When would that not be the case? Because most facilities that I know of discharge into an MS4 and eventually end up in a water body. Uh, when would it be a case where they don't directly discharge to a water body? That's a great question. So in an MS4, they may all directly discharge to impaired water body. I'm sorry, they may all directly discharge to a water body, but is that water body impaired? So if the MS4 discharges to a water body that's not impaired, the discharger getting the permit is not a new discharger discharging to an impaired water body. Yeah. Um, when would an MS4 not be a direct discharge to a water body? I'm saying that they're not always directly discharging to an impaired water body. Right. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, 
how, in what case would you consider Nimbus 4 not actually directly discharge into a water, like if they go to a retention pond, or how, how would we make that determination? Well, even if you go to a retention basin, like in Fresno, if that overflowed, where would the water go? And so I, I imagine that many MS4s, unless they go directly to the, you know, the ocean, they are directly discharging to a creek, a river, a lake, all of those things, uh, waters of the U.S. And so it's just that the MS4 isn't always directly discharging into a reach that's impaired. That's the difference. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, Nora, I've noticed that the industrial general permit uses the term watershed and water body interchangeably in some places. Is there any, um, could you give us some guidance on uh, uh, what that means? And um, like, for instance, the 303 impaired watershed, you mentioned that a couple times, but we look at the 303D list that's included in the permit, and it's broken down by water bodies, not watershed. So Correct. Do you have anything? Could you give us some insight on that? So, what the so there's a, also an appendix three. It's a one page. It's before you get to the spreadsheet. I can show you where to find that. Maybe we should open it. Okay. So let me let me get out of PowerPoint mode and let me just go to our state water board page, industrial. So what we've done is we've we've linked all of the separate permit documents on our web page. What we talk about when we talk about Appendix 3 is there is a spreadsheet. There's also a one-page actual Appendix 3 quote. <laughs> and this is where we talk about the watershed. And so what we've done in SMARTS is we've done the work to categorize the actual water bodies in Appendix 3 into a tool so that you know what pollutants are in the watershed. Now, since it's on the watershed scale for existing dischargers, it doesn't really matter which water body it is anymore. It's just within that HUC-10. And the reason we defined a HUC-10 is because we had to develop that tool for dischargers to help them. It was uh, picking an answer so that we we can get people's questions answered when they try to do this watershed scale pollutant source assessment. So we talk about watershed mainly in this one page, and then the rest of the permit really talks about water bodies. And so it's just really important to keep clear that if you're an existing discharger and it says, you know, include in your pollutant source assessment impaired water bodies, we mean those pollutants in that HUC-10 that are related to your industrial activity. And, and you know, it, it Another thing is that, you know, you're a new discharger and you get that quisp and you, you eliminate that direct discharge um, pollutant loading and then you become an existing discharger. Did you miss anything in your pollutant source assessment in that watershed? It's just a check for, for individuals to help them comply with impaired water body requirements so that they are making making sure they have a robust pollutant source assessment that didn't neglect impaired water body pollutants. That's really all the watershed scale does. So, you know, we'd imagine if you had any of these parameters at your site, you'd be sampling for them if they're related to industrial sources just based upon having to do monitoring for your pollutants. Okay, and another question um, that I had, I've, I've been wondering this, and I bet a lot of other people have been wondering this. I've noticed that in doing SWIFTs for some facilities and evaluating the HUC-10, we're actually including um, pollutants and water bodies that are uh, dozens of miles away, sometimes almost 100 miles away, even upstream from the facility. Um, and that just seems to me, it, I, I don't know, it almost seems a little overkill. Like there's no way that we could impact that water body. So uh, could you explain some of the reasoning behind why the state chose such a broad brush with the HUC-10? Well, we did the HUC-10 because if we did any smaller, it would not, it wouldn't be including appropriate reaches. And, it, and a lot of this has to do with how impaired water bodies have been adopted, is that it started really cutting things up into smaller chunks 
that wouldn't make sense on a state scale. And because this is a general permit, we had to pick one that was protective. But we assume that, you know, if it's if it's impaired for it uh, the upstream, you know, you wouldn't necessarily want to create a new impairment downstream um, with that facility. So and we've found, in, in general, you know, I'm not quoting um, Office of Chief Counsel or anything, but in general, if the watershed has a pollutant problem, you wouldn't want to be contributing to that anywhere in the watershed, even if it is more of a problem upstream, you wouldn't want to start a new impairment downstream. And it's just, do you have that pollutant? If so, just start sampling for it because we don't, we need to collect data on what's happening in that watershed. And some of this data may show, you know, it may turn into the impaired water bodies changing um, in the long run. But for this permit, you know, we are using the hook tent. Okay. All right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, <laughs> I was just wondering, uh, that tool, is there somewhere we can do like a slide-by-slide -slide how to get to that tool? How to get to? That watershed tool, the hooked in tool. Yes. Smart I know there are, a lot of my clients, they're very uh, non-computer literate. So. Sure. So we, we put this in the notice of intent in the additional facility info tab, and it should appear there. Uh, we are doing some modifications to this screen in SMARTS. So I didn't include a demo on that because we're going to make it a little more clear in the next few days. So we also put out a user guide. So you can go. We've posted them on the Industrial Stormwater Program page. And when you open this help guide, there's also a quick, a quick guide too. But you can go to new notice of intent, and it goes through all the screens for a new notice of intent. And it's pretty funny, when you get to the new discharger one, we've put a lot of notes in with how to do it correctly, the way the system is currently designed. We're planning on doing some redesign, but this is really the key here for new permittees um, with how to actually appropriately fill out SMARTS. So I just wanted to point that out. Great. These are the new discharger questions, and then this is the pollutants in that watershed. So you'd only be picking one, are you a new discharger? And then you'd only be picking the pollutants related to that direct discharge uh, to an impaired water body. Okay. <laughs>